Hello, welcome. Once again, it has been quite a hiatus. So let's not wait any longer and go straight into fun world. Today I want to talk a bit about the aesthetics of books and the values of reading. And the reason for that is because I've been watching a few videos lately on, well, I guess you would call it booktube, or just generally commentary on booktube, which kind of overlap with some of the thoughts that I've had on the topic and also on, um, well, my own relationship with books. I think I talked a little bit in previous videos um, about what reading means to me in some way anyway, so what, it, what I've been using it for lately. And yeah, so I think to give you a little bit of an overview of what these kind of videos we're talking about is, well, I would say it's basically two parts of discourse. It's two criticisms. A, that um, reading has become mainly an aesthetic, so people might not even read it, but they just want to appear to read books, or they want a specific... Mm, well look to be associated with it or or an, a specific vibe i guess is the best word for it if you're not going to use aesthetic which is what i was trying to avoid again <laughs> um so yeah they, they want a specific vibe or um a genre um adjusted um or not adjusted but uh connected to it so for example dark academia was a big thing or like Coquette girl and things like that. And the other thing is um, that women are mostly reading kind of silly books or particularly erotic books. That's, that's, I think, the two main forms of criticism in these videos. And um, towards the end of my video here, I want to talk a little bit about how... Um, I find it kind of like interesting how it's gendered, but maybe introduce an, a different or an additional avenue of what I've been thinking more about. So let's first get to the surface. Always, always stick up, that's safe. Um, so yeah, so I guess one thing that I've been noticing uh, because I use Goodreads, this uh, application now bought by Amazon. Well, it's been bought by Amazon uh, quite a while ago. But, uh, it, it does belong now to that conglomerate. Um, and on that app, there is a lot of suggestion for books. And they generally, I would say, they're not really aimed at what I like to read. And they're kind of... Well, a lot of it is, feels like romance books or kind of... Um, well, I, there used to be young adult, a lot of young adult fiction, I think, and that was kind of like aimed at teenagers, but I would say like a lot of adults read it anyways. And now it's kind of like more adult fiction and it has like more hardcore scenes, not just romance, but actual sex and stuff like that. And... Uh, it's mostly aimed at women. Like it's it's a bit, I guess, similar to romance novels used to used to be, but perhaps a little bit more empowered and maybe a bit bigger too. And yeah, the, the, so these are these genres, and there's like a lot of um, discussion about like is is this uh, is this just trash? That's kind of like you know mind numbing and kind of makes you stupid, basically. <laughs> And um, I was kind of thinking about this too in the sense that I do think there's like very different 
um, well, intellectual merit, I would say, in different books. Like, generally, obviously, reading is, is, is good, you know, like, but some reading is clearly just entertainment and not that much different from watching a silly TV show. And other reading makes you, certainly makes you think more, makes you contemplate things more, maybe uh, broadens your mind in some ways. And um, I do think there's like a different value to it uh, in that, in that difference. And a lot of the most popular books do seem like what I guess you could call like popcorn books at best. Um, and then like, I mean, a lot of the videos then talk about also like how this is very gendered, you know, and like, uh, books aimed at women are considered more trashy generally and books aimed at men have more of a, um, are seen as having more artistic merit. And I do think there's definitely, um, a part of this that's true. Um, but yeah, so so when I when I do look at like Goodreads, I, I do sometimes think it's like, oh, there's there's really a lot of, well, frankly, like shit, you know, <laughs> like stuff that's like very trashy, like the the Jersey Shore of that that used to be. I mean, it's probably not quite uh, <laughs> contemporary anymore. I don't know, like the Love Is Blind of I've not watched this, but the Love Is Blind of of uh, books, I guess. Oh, almost died. Not ideal. And then, ah, yeah, yeah, okay. Hmm, hmm. That was indeed not good. And then the other aspect, and that ooh, I've also kind of been thinking about, is um, the aesthetics of reading. Because so lately I've been, <laughs> I go a bit through phases, and I, I've been buying more um, real-world uh, books made on paper that, you know, that old technology. Well, before I went through a phase of basically wanting to get rid of more, all of my books and be like, oh, I just need digital now. I'm I'm a digital only kind of fella. Uh, so right now I'm in the, in the opposite direction again. But I, I actually, my friend Ben, he he's kind of finds it ironic that I digitalized a lot of my old books and now I'm I'm buying uh I'm not buying the same ones but I'm definitely buying new books again and I one of the aspects that I just very honestly um appeals to me is the is the aesthetics of having books in my place now now that is actually also one of the reasons why I got rid of my books because I didn't have much space and now I'm going to have more space because I'm going to move we can talk about in a future video and so i like the idea of having a bookshelf again and also of like reading um well actual books again and the other aspect that's just really good because of what i've been struggling with which is uh, attention and um, being distracted by social media i'm kind of getting a, a handle on it now but still a problem uh like Books don't don't really have that, right? Like, you, I'm not going to read a different book. If I go to a cafe uh, and I would just have my book with me, I'm, well, I'm reading that book, obviously. I'm not going to read another book because I don't have one. And I'm not going to go on TikTok because, okay. So I would go on TikTok because I deleted the app. But theoretically, I could go on TikTok, I guess, if I have my phone with me. That's really the big thing, you know, those phones. But yeah, so I'm kind of, right now, I'm in a bit of a hybrid. What did I do? I flattened this. How did I flatten it? I forget, but I did. Ah, yeah, that's how. Does this have any meaning? I don't know. But yeah, so I'm kind of in a hybrid phase where I'm doing uh, both digital and and traditional books, whether traditional or with boba as a reference. It's funny if you know. Oh, zombies. Yeah, it's it's hilarious if you know if you know it. The girls who know, no. The girls who do it don't. What? 
Okay, so that's the aesthetics, and I definitely do like the aesthetics, and I can kind of understand generally people wanting to live a life that's kind of aligned with how they view themselves and the life that they um, that they like, you know, that appeals to them aesthetically. So uh, I'm I'm not against that, and I mean I understand like on book talk and book tube and things like that there's uh, a lot of time spent on the much more on the aesthetics of of books like i don't know uh making very elaborate bindings or something like that which you know it's 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 interesting it's fine um although i do think maybe a little bit more content could be focused on uh, an analysis and then also discussion and perhaps like I mean not necessarily critique but definitely an aspect of it is critique or if you um if you view critique as like a more broad um endeavor then and I guess critique is actually the b best word for it um yeah so that that's one thing I was thinking about book talk booktube bookstagram bookler Book, book, hmm. book, book, yeah. <laughs> and so the last thing that I wanted to address about this is because I do think, so a lot of these videos to talk about it, talk about how it's gendered in the way that um, women's books are devalued and generally what women read. But another thing that I want to put in is that actually like, there is like an equivalent that I feel like is not really um, criticized as much. And I mean, all this booktube stuff is usually like women critiquing other women, actually, as far as I can tell. Uh, but there, there is like a, a fair amount of men, like kind of like in, in the sort of like tech bro uh, world that mainly read like mind numbing mind numbing self help and like like really books that are like that that could would would be better on a napkin right like if you just you know jot it down like oh um three thoughts which the book had you'd probably be better off than reading the 400 pages or whatever and and there seem to be like guys that do make a bit of a identity out of reading basically just this. And then also the the identity is kind of like an idea of intellectualism, which um, I mean, maybe I should have talked about this earlier, but like one of the criticism of um, these women reading the more, you know, popcorn books is that it's not very intellectual. And then also that like sometimes as a, as a defense of it, um, they t they talk about like oh and there's like a bit of an intel intellectual streak of like oh you don't need to let people just enjoy things you don't need to think about everything in such depth or whatever it's like well oh, it's just silly Think things like that and yeah uh, so that reminds me of how there's basically like this faux faux intellectualism that I I can see in like a lot of these <laughs> I don't know I'm like connecting a lot of different cultures here, like, you know, the podcaster culture and the tech bro culture and the self-improvement culture that men might be into, which, oh, I remember what is this called? It's, uh, oh, I forget what, what it's called exactly, but there's like 50 hard or something like that. It's, it's kind of a, um, I, I think this is not exactly what it is, but it's it's a it's this idea of doing like a bunch of hard things, and um, one of them is like read ten pages a day or something like that, and like offer. So I'm not sure if they say like nonfiction book or like I don't think they say self help, but they basically mean these like incredibly dumb ass books, right? Like they, that's they're like. I mean, I guess Atomic Habits has some value, and uh, like a, I, I have, I found value in some self-help books as well. They're not all terrible, and they often do have at least a few good thoughts. But if you just read that, it's, it's not very uh, enlightening, right? Like nonfiction books, as a broad category, have obviously a lot of value in them. But a lot of what is like, 
I mean, in the more in the set of abstraction is is really mind numbing, I think. And so yeah, it's kind of interesting that you can kind of connect a sort of intellectualism, which comes with reading generally, right? Like that's a kind of aesthetic um, you get from from reading or from having books or collecting books, um, but actually doing things that are probably not particularly beneficial to to broadening your mind or um, developing any sorts of ideas that go any deeper. And yeah, that kind of thing, I, that's what I was thinking about when I watched like, I, I watched like three or four videos that kind of were on the topic. It's my YouTube addiction that's also not really broadening my mind, but you know, what what can we do? We all have vices, I guess. Uh, yeah, so let me know if anything I said made any sense to you. If you have thought about anything similar, whether you like books, if you know how to read, if you know how to write, then write me a comment. And I guess I'll see you in the next one. Um, yeah. They spoopy friends. <laughs>